Ah, a terrible, eventful new year. A year of the black snake or the water snake. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 all I know is that I, I, like you, I seek the Lord for um, everything about how to look at news or how to look at how to perceive my situation, the situation we are in. And a few things of note that happened that I haven't discussed with you, I have discussed privately with other people. But it seemed like right off the bat, just on the spiritual perspective, and I know that people won't say this because of uh, the uh, King Dictator's great um, victory uh, last night in terms of the surrender of, you know, the bludgeoning of uh, the opposition party, laughing, gloating, spiking the football, and really enjoying to... Uh, the destruction of the Republican Party as he is doing it and having them having to bend over publicly in front of other people and have him publicly punish them while laughing satanically just with almost... Um, I have never seen anything like it. I've read about it in the Bible and the book of Daniel. I've, um, I, I've seen it in uh, you know the story of various people at various times in terms of hubris, and, and, but usually they're brought down. I often wondered about Luciferians and Satanists like Obama, who makes no bones about it. He is a complete, total, 100% authentic, that's your guy, Satanist. I think they like to refer to themselves as, you know, God-fearing because they fear Lucifer. But, you know, it's the same club that so many are in that saying it makes me just sound foolish because it's so in your face, in plain sight, it disappears. But if you see all the signs are there, all the indications and proof is there, but you'd have to just follow it and follow the lies, follow the um, spiritually significant symbolic uh, things that have been said and done. And then you would realize, oh, look at what I'm looking at. And they don't hide it. It's just, you know, uh, they want to make it so that their dumb media and dumb masses surrounding them and sycophants would never would say that's ridiculous because they've been trained to think there's no gods, there's no nothing, this is it. What I think, what I feel, that's all that counts. And there's nothing else affecting my life. And they're completely under the control of media, education, or diseducation and this um, Babylonian society, but keeping them dumb, meaning no spiritual life. And they do know there's a Satan. They've all bowed down to Satan. That's, but that's such a common thing now in the world. It's a rite of passage, a rite of initiation. It's pretty much what everyone gets. So what's the big deal? And then, of course, they keep away from you the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the harsh you know, dark side of the whole thing, which is, you know, that it is based on bloodletting. And so that's, that's kept out of your view. And uh, along with it goes all the perversions and whatever else. And if you give yourself over to it and uh, all that, they'll start you off as a, a young prostitute and bring you up to be an assassin and then uh, polish you off as a uh, philanthropist should you be successful. That was what my family was all about. Yeah. <laughs> Saw the whole thing up close and personal growing up, so it was like, there's nothing about Luciferianism, uh, high-end masonry, secret societies that I didn't see. The limos, the doors opening, the secret door opening to the football game and going to the 50-yard line, being escorted there. You know, that, that sort of thing is... When I was a kid, I didn't understand why didn't everybody else get that same treatment. Um, 
And why, would there, why was there such respect and fear of uh, my own grandfather? And um, fear would be the, right, the better word. Not, I, I don't know about respect, but respect meaning fear, meaning fear of being killed. And I, it took a while for me to figure that one out uh, because I just didn't believe that that could be possible. But that's, that sort of thing is what, uh, you know, along with greasing the palms with nice $100, crisp $100 bills, that seems to get the, uh, you to the front of the line. So that level of corruption I'd grown up with. I mean, I'd seen just the whole time. No, I mean, we've all... I'm sure, you know, you go, you have a wedding, a funeral, you get the limo. That, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about privilege. And I'm talking about respect so that one keeps one's privilege, which means one has to be in the game. If not, then there's no protection for that respect. And that position in society <coughs> will be jeopardized and someone else will take that position should there not be a ranking in the Luciferian ranking system, which, of which there is no other on earth. God, I get so tired of repeating that, damn it. It's like people just can't seem to see what's right in front of them, what's on the news, what's in the commercials, what's in the logos, which is in the art, which is in the architecture. Everywhere you look, it's screaming to be defined. And in every guild, whether it's, um, you know, union guilds, the same hierarchy exists, whether it's in acting and, you know, movies and sports, uh, entrepreneurialism, getting in Forbes magazine, that doesn't come free. That doesn't come just because you make money. That becomes if you have a position in respect. The only way you're going to be able to position your company is if you're part of that system. How else could it be? That's what's been in place for thousands of years, has never changed. So how else would you do that? I'm, I'm not talking about people that have a company like I have a cleaning company. It cleans up office buildings at night, let's say. And it's never going to be listed in the Forbes 500 and uh, or the Fortune 500, for that matter. And uh, the person probably will never be a billionaire, but it's a good, lucrative business, and he doesn't bow down to anybody. I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about society, position, rank, you know, the right to... Why do you think the same people keep getting in the paper again and again? The same people get the roles in movies again and again. It's because of their rank, period. There is no other ex explanation. Otherwise, it would be a competition each time. How do you eliminate the competition? You have to become privileged. The limo has to get there and be pushed to the front of the line and you get out first. How does that happen? That's corruption, but you have to join. And then what happens? Well, say you're an actor, then you get the roles. Musician, then you get to play the concerts, you know, whatever. Make the records. Same people again and again get thrust in front of our face. Oh, buy the new record from ancient Eric Clapton. We brought out all his old, too. How, how do these people keep recycling themselves like that? Or Paul McCartney or whatever. It's position. Someone has to protect that fame and that fortune with, it's not just hiring a good publicist. And that's just basically it. There's really nothing else to it it's really very, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. Most people just say, I know, uh, what are you going to do? And the answer is, well, you're going to rail against it if you belong to Jesus Christ. Are you kidding? There's only one thing for you to do. Otherwise, you would be considered with the enemy and burn in hell. That's the, that's the issue, <laughs> friend. That's the issue. Then, yes, there's competition to knock out those who are privileged with another set of those who are privileged. And I think in some sense of fashion, people thought you were seeing that with Obama. And it's like, no, he was already 
positioned in um, the secret societies and is uh, he, uh, like he's basically in the same thing as, as people he complains about being his enemies are. They're in the same club. That's why you see this kabuki theater going on in Washington. No one, no one would publicly humiliate themselves like this Congress that basically, remember I predicted the Republican Party would be ended? Well, I believe this is the final death knell fin- fini. Well, I don't see how anybody in their right mind could vote for anything after witnessing what we witnessed and realizing that the votes are not, not only don't count, but they're miscounted at a higher level than the mo- voting machine. So no one can touch that. I mean, nobody can get caught for that. They dial in whoever they want. Your vote does not count, did not count this last election, and will not count. And, you know, I, yes, I worked like a fool trying to vote, trying to keep the thing on, you know, trying to believe that there was a, a reason. I think, I think, you know, it was basically good instincts to want to preserve that which was God-fearing about our society. And I just hoped against hopelessness that maybe if there were enough people who felt the same way, that the, it'd be overwhelming and they wouldn't be able to fix the vote. But then I was kind of thinking that the vote really had to do with the voting machine. No, I mean, I'm... Look, I was the one who prophesied, not predicted, but prophesied in 2008, the end of free speech. <laughs> I mean, on, on that day, when no one else was saying it, I said, that's what this means symbolically in the spirit. And I predict this will... And it did. Um, and then you say, well, then how could you be so wrong on voting? And I said, well, I'm... Not wrong, I was just following the lead of my Lord. He wanted me to participate in it, even though it was a lost cause. Doesn't the Lord want actors on the earth who participate in... Otherwise, you'd sit there being the smartest guy in the room, a bump on a log, saying nothing, doing nothing for all your life, which, believe me, I know plenty of people doing just that. And God bless them, you know, at least you're not contributing to the evil. If you're just sitting there, a bump on a log, you're actually doing a good service. I've got no complaint about you. But you sit there with your nose in the air, above everything and everyone, and saying, well, it's all rigged, and, you know, I'm, I've already, my mind is already totally educated about the whole thing, so I'm just sitting here and waiting for Jesus or waiting to the end of the world, but I'm not, I'm uh, above and beyond participation. And the only problem with that is, is it violates a number of scriptures, a number of mandates from the Lord which is he wants actors. Even though he, he knows the outcome, why doesn't he just sit there like a bump on a log? He knows because everything we're doing has been written. So why doesn't he just sit there and let it play out? No, we call upon him and we participate with him in a dynamic process as if the jig is not up, the game is not decided yet. Even though, on the one hand, it is, and we know the outcome, and on another hand, it isn't. Am I right? So, God wanted people to participate. He wants people to go to the, you know, to the, um, even though, yes, politics and religion are probably the two most corrupt things one can imagine. And uh, and yet, there are his people participating in the lost cause who are good brothers and sisters who have been uh, on the path and, and keeping an optimistic outlook. You see, the problem with becoming a pessimist is you play God. The problem with becoming a cynic is you play God. The problem with becoming either one of those things and sitting there with your nose in the air is you become the, part, the problem that you point out in others. The problem with a pure heart participating in the hopes that things get better and keeping an earnest prayer and keeping on you know, imitating the walk of Christ and praying good hope on those Satanists and those evil people who have come against the society and each other and have brought the world to the brink of war, that praying for them to open their hearts to Jesus Christ and having hope that that will happen um, 
the Lord simply loves that. In the face of all opposition, we would pray for our enemies, or rather, the enemies of God. Really, the, technically, there are no enemies of God. They would be enemies of themselves to wake up and not hurt themselves or other people. We would, rather than condemning them, in the midst of all this evil, we would continue to pray despite the fact that it's so far gone, it seems like there's no hope and that's it and the door is shut and we're going to the final. The idea that a child would kneel down and pray and the adult wouldn't because he knows better is uh, something the Lord wants to rub our noses in as a punishment. How does this child have hope and kneels down to pray? Would, would, would Lord Father not answer that child? That this world would become a better place? That we don't know. And, I, and really, it gets to the point. It really just gets to the point. It gets to the point that we can say with 100% surety that though the outcome is written down in the holographic Bible, which is definitely a mysterious thing, it's almost like you know, a Ouija board in reverse, right? <laughs> right? Um, we still don't know how it's going to go. We still don't know the outcome. We do and we don't. And people are, right now, and what you want to hear about is, well, Brother Z, what about this time? I mean, this seems like it, you know, the Antichrist. And I'm like, well, here's the thing. Um, you can look at the book of Daniel. Certainly this man has, uh, you know, um, won the kingdom by flatteries. He certainly blasphemed and boosted himself above the Most High, which is how you know he's a Luciferian. But they all do that. Um, he has... Uh, the no friend of women goes back to his own history. Uh, the idea of an arranged marriage and Valerie Jarrett running the White House, and you know, but he, I mean, he is a friend of women, but he's no friend of women in terms of. I think we know where his position lies and uh, his basic carnality, which would make sense. And then you know the 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 the, the, uh, the royalty aspect and everything else be called a king. Sure, he fits a lot of those things. Hasn't made a peace treaty with Israel. Uh, seems to hate and disdain Israel with all his heart, soul, and mind and, and, and provides uh, billions of dollars to the Muslim Brotherhood, which we knew with the Egyptian fall was engineered by the Obama administration so that he could be Pharaoh of Egypt. And he would have Morsi as a lieutenant. And no matter how much we repeat the same truth that's right in your face, people just don't believe it. Bless them. They can't believe it's that bad. They can't believe that something like that could exist, a sub-world where there are kings and queens. Yes! What do you think? That's why the elections mean nothing. What do you think we're looking at? There, it's kings and queens and position and royalty as of old. That's what our society is. And, yeah. You just can lead a horse to water, can't cause him to drink. If you can't see it, your eyes are still closed. There's nothing I can do. The only one that can open those eyes is the Holy Spirit, whom you claim to have a relationship with. Well, if you can't see what I'm talking about, then you don't have a relationship because anyone with the Holy Spirit would agree with me because it's a simple eye-opening, which I underwent long, long, long ago. I mean, it's really hard for me to believe that you could have a mature Christian who couldn't see like the Holy Spirit would enable us to see, there must be some kind of bondage or occlusion or something that's holding you back from communication with God. Maybe perhaps you're wanting to get your opinions from man who claims to be God-inspired. Uh, I don't know. Well, aren't, isn't that what you're doing, brother? No, I'm just I'm talking basics here. I'm not, nothing particularly inspiring about calling um, being on the spiritual path and being able to describe what I see, that any child can do that. And we're not talking about some 
being a leader because of being able to be a visionary and see things other people can't see. I'm talking about what everyone should already know and know just matter of factly, not, wow, did you know that? No, that they, they should know it in a matter of fact way. Not some kind of exotic, whoa, that's really some information. Well, that's a conspiracy. No, there's no conspiracy. I mean, the only conspiracy is that Satan, you know, the 80-20 rule or 90-10, right? The mark of Cain, um, the secret society success, the lack of reap what you sow for certain people. Now, there are things like that people want me to explain. How come some people do all the paying and other people seem to go their whole life like this George H.W. Bush? Mr. Thousand Points of Light. How in the world is he carrying on and living to be 90 years old? And well, my uncle was the same way. Total Satanist. And he lived to be around 90. And, uh, and I'm, I always wondered, you know, with all the bad things that these guys do, how can they live on to be that old? You know, seemingly with, with, with health and drinking it up, living it up and just do, doing whatever they want to do. Till they're 90 years old. Whereas the other guy over here has spoken truth and served the Lord. And he gets sick and dies from stress and cancer and everything else. And doesn't, I mean, we, we, I read and I hear about a lot of brothers and sisters who have died already. You know, who fought the good fight and then it was some part of their lives and then they paid with a shorter life. How's that? Uh, that should, that's not fair. The Lord could cause you to have a longer life. He should make his own people have a longer life and them have a shorter life. Well, that's right, except that we're in the opposite world. That proves my point. It's, it's not equilibrium here. It's fixed. It's rigged. It's the Truman Show. It's 80-20 at least, if not 90-10. In other words, they can do 80 or 90% bad things. They'll pay for 10 of it. But someone else pays for, the, for example, the budget crisis. The American people paid for a few people's sins and they paid for the whole thing. So basically about 2%, in this case, humans, 2% of the bill, you know, was felt by all probably, but 98% was borne by the American people who didn't incur the debt and didn't do all those things and didn't blow the derivatives on the global casino and didn't do that stuff. In other words, they went and gambled and they lost, and they stuck the bill to the American people claiming that if Americans don't pay for it, they're going to go down the tubes. And then as soon as they got the bailout, they went back to the casino again and started up again. And we're still in the same problem. Um, and, you know, 98% of the people pay each time because they don't have power. The people in this country, America, have no power and no say of what goes on. It's a totalitarian regime that they're hoping to train people through CBS, NBC, ABC, uh, newspapers, you know, uh, or online journals and whatnot. They're hoping to train them in colleges, uh, Marxist professors and so forth, globalist professors, to try to train the people who they belong to, that they're slaves, and they need to be slowly um, shown how, you know, this thing that was America really isn't and and they're really slaves and you know they need to be global citizens and they need to be gay and they need to really love abortion and they need to you know um, love genocide and and you know they need to be pliable and workable and and you know, they need to be good compliant global citizens um and you know no god no jesus no none of that stuff no no churches no no affiliations like that it's cool to do buddhist meditation things like that that's awfully cool um, become a vegan, that's really cool, you know, vegan, that, bisexual, cool, even though you're married, then that's really awesome, that's like Hollywood, uh, that's the requirement in Hollywood, yeah, all the agents I ever met, that's the way they were, all the uh, big wigs, the studio honchos, that's the way they were, they were just pedophiles, you got to the top, you got to sample the goods, uh, I, I don't know, why is that so difficult to understand? I mean, why is everything so difficult to understand all the simple, easy stuff? Why am I still here having to repeat it? You know, I'm here having to repeat it because somebody isn't getting it. You know, no matter how many times they listen to this and go around YouTube and they, they hear other people 
Matt, you know, the other people I think are throwing you off. I, as much as I really love some of them, I, I think maybe they're throwing you off because they're not giving it to you in a way. It's it's almost like giving it to you like a story format that you still have a distance as the reader or the or the hearer of the story, but you're not really engaged in the story. You know, for example, the story of genetic manipulation and that we're all um, our DNA is, you know, part God, part fallen angel, let's say. You know, we're all Nephilim. <laughs> well, no, the Nephilim were something else or a real creation that would be, um, you know, um, but humanity kind of falls into a category of genetically those that have the God gene and those that don't are the wheat and tares. You know, I mean, in other words, everyone's fallen, all the, it's all corrupted, but, but the God gene, or if you like the lamb's book of life, which is the God gene is in, you know, a lot of people and it's, it's dormant there. And, um, it's a genetic, I'm sure that you could, if there was, there'll never be time to find it, but I'm sure it's there because there's some people that are just born psychopaths and anti-God and, you know, they become the honchos on earth. It's all very systematized, mathematical and predictable that I could look at two kids and I could tell you right away which one's going to succeed and which one won't. The one who won't will be the one that's more has a penchant for truth, is more of a pure heart. The one who will is more crafty, sly and lying. And that person will. Uh, the one who's going to sneak around and get sex before anybody else but not say anything. The one who's going to... Um, join the secret satanic game to get everyone to be by or whatever. And, uh, that's the conspiracy in high school. Uh, he'll be the one leading that, you know, he'll, he'll be the one that's the class president. He'll be the one that's the, uh, you know, he'll be the leader and he'll, he'll have a name in society. The other one, um, I would deem a loser if he survives to adulthood, which is doubtful if I see someone like that. And I've seen the same, in twins, I've seen the good twin and the bad twin. So that would show me that there's a genetic corruption that so that you could have a Cain or an Abel from the same womb. Which kind of like, you know, people with the serpent seed thing, I'd say, well, then, you know, we're, then, then everything is serpent seed. Except the difference is that the, the God gene exists in people, in children, but it comes from, it's genetic. It's just a choice. God chooses some with the right gene and others he does not choose. And they don't have that. And they are really made for the world, made for Satan, made for this uh, lopsided 80-20 disequilibrium system that should not exist yet does. Babylon, mystery Babylon, uh, the satanic realm, the matrix should not exist, but it does. So what's wrong with this picture? And what's wrong with it is that people just don't understand. Um, the stupidest people I ever met were Buddhists. Uh, churchy Christians. Um, the Buddhists, I mean, I mean, the Buddhists of the, of the origin of Zen, that sort of thing. That, that the world would say, oh, that's the most advanced. And no, they were the most retarded of anyone I've ever met. Even the Hare Krishnas were ahead of them in, in understanding God understanding the way this whole thing works. They're just basically about negation and disattachment and they end up sitting there. Again, the Zen people, it's just mind control. They sit there as bumps on a log. There's no, you know, the, the other thing, are the, the susceptible are, are, you know, the, the whole cults and ashrams and then there's the Christian cults, which usually are women cults, usually polygamous cults, which is hilarious. And these are stupid people, incredibly. You know, I know I understand you could be beguiled by the serpent and and you can be brought into a cult or brought into Buddhism or brought into. Um, now, I got myself thrown out of a couple different ones, but my, the main exit was having, I guess, having an affair with this. I did. I did this. You know, I had this affair with this. The, the leader's wife initiated by her. But I was just, you know, young and stupid and. um you know, then that led to some kind of pursuit of, of, of corrupt, of overthrowing the system because they couldn't answer the questions about enlightenment and then seeking the Japanese priests and having, a, having, you know, going to these rituals that they would have. And, um, you know, uh, eventually the whole organization just flipped, just co collapsed, but it was bizarre. Um, 
the whole thing. And eventually I was asked to leave for disrupting the system. I said, I'm just trying to look, I even wear the tie and coat at times, you know, I'm trying to like find out the truth here. And I was shown the door. Same thing. Well, no, 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 no matter. The same thing happened. The, the answer for enlightenment is they, they don't, they have not. Here's the answer for Buddhist enlightenment. There is no enlightenment. That's the joke. Because if there were enlightenment, all beings would be enlightened. It wouldn't be like one gets to be and one doesn't because enlightenment demands that all is enlightened or none is. So therefore, it shoots itself in the foot, typical man-centered thinking, and leads nowhere. And that's the point. And if you say nowhere to the Zen master, he says, excellent, you've advanced to the next level. <laughs> no Buddha, nowhere, no Zen. The answer is no Zen. Yes, now you get to be a master, provided you can apply it in your everyday life. Meaning you're very otherworldly. You're very unattached. You're very cool, buddy. Yeah, you win. Glad, glad you could uh, become born on earth so you could be the ultimate spiritual snob. You know? And, and your school of elite Zen Buddhists. How marvelous for you. And you can look down on all the little people that don't know the inner, the inner map, the inner life of the Buddha. Buddha just is another term for the enlightened one. I'm not slamming. I, it's just like every other religion. I can, I mean, look at Islam. That's a total joke. So is Christianity and Judaism and all the rest of them. They're a joke. I mean, the way they are, the way they wound up, it's just a one, one Islam is a militant organization and, you know, there's no way they can soft pedal that one. These are all supposed to be about the seeking of God, the seeking of truth. But they all became, you know, there's no religion that is not inextricably linked with um, politics and therefore wars. It never has existed, never did. They tried to make you think that here, separation of church and state, but there never was. Uh, America is a religion. It's called Luciferianism. And the temple is Washington, D.C., and it's laid out as a Luciferian temple to the gods of old. And I don't know what more... I, look, there's not much more I can say at this point. I, I just can't be talking to a bunch of idiots that can't... I mean, this is like putting two and two equals four on the blackboard, and people just can't get it. What, what, what can I do? It's not my fault. I know it out there. I know that if I had to try to have half this conversation with people, I'd be written off as a kook or a lunatic or some sort of conspiracy nut or some you know, crazy person. And the most basic of conversations we can't have. You know, we're basically in prison here. We cannot speak our minds. Um, rest assured that I, doesn't matter, you know, as long as I talk like this, as long as we keep putting forth the truth about what's going on, then the, the, the Luciferic goodies of being, say, successful with a record I'd mix or any of those things, those would be pushed to the side unless I were to take down everything and, and start again. Don't you understand that? People that speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ and bring the truth in whatever way, whether they do it on YouTube or this way or podcast, or don't you realize that they've uh, risked, that they've sacrificed any kind of worldly success? That's what happens. That's the choice they made, but that that's the cost. Um, no, my goal is to, you know, do sound better than anybody else and be shunned that I, I know that's just a really sick thing, but it's, it's developed that way just to, you know, to produce and, and I intend to get involved with, and I'll put it out there right now. I'm actually looking for, uh, the, the current album I'm working on. And I gave you a tidbit and taste. If you don't, if you haven't heard it, you go to the, to the Zeph report and you simply, tap on the SoundCloud link and you can hear um, something. There's a lot of other songs that I'm, in, I'm finishing and mastering them now, but I think you'll see that's a radio-ready 
uh, totally unique kind of Christian song and, and amazing. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, there's some other real surprises in that album that are, you know, just as much, just as original, just as defiant of the current music scene and in style and substance and execution. And, um, you know, when I talk about execution, I mean the placement of the mix of all instruments and all things and all voices to be distinctly heard in the same level as Capitol Records or any, anybody else, at the same volume levels, at the same exact as Ocean Way Studios as anybody. It's ears. It's not the gear. It's ears. You need gear, but it's ears. To get to that level and then be shunned is my goal. <laughs> to be, no, oh, but, you know, with this effort, you know, you could have this song there, but, you know, it's, it'll be shunned. And then we have a lot of people that are not music lovers that go to the Zephyr Port. I'm like, or they're stuck in liking something that they were told to, you know, it's, there's really a, you know, music's the great divide. So I need to be doing a lot more uh, sound music, radio theater, that sort of thing, because, um, that's, that's really going to be the way of communication in the future. This way of communication, you can, you can just count almost the number of podcasts that will come after it, it's over. The free speech in this way is over. Songs, no, you can do songs. Uh, but, you know, don't be surprised if one day I've got to take down the um, the content on the site to make way for silly, uh, you know, for, 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 for music and songs. And in other words, artists saying things as they can through their poetry. And that may be all we're left with in the end, but we're headed toward a totalitarian state. I don't have any kind of news other than it may not be a straight line, and I have some news about Obama himself. I mean, this is, I hate to even report on this stuff, but Hawaii was all about, you know, becoming possessed with Lucifer and all that. I know this makes me sound like a loon. And it was unsuccessful. And it, it, was, it would, had something to do with the Mayan calendar ending, you know, because all the other calendars, the pyramids, wherever there are pyramids around the world, they all had the same occultic roots and, and things with the fallen angels. So, <laughs> and they have rituals and... Like the, the pyramid obelisk and the reflecting pool is all part of that ritual. And the same people are in Washington that are in the Maya, that are in the um, Egypt, that are in China, that are in, you know, the mound builders. You know, we can go on and on. But it's the same people. Same thing. I'm not, they, it's so hard. I've got to count to ten. I've got to stop being frustrated. I just thought that after 10 years of dealing with all this, and now now all the things I was called crazy for in 2002 and three, of course, no one would dare call me crazy now. Nobody. All those naysayers have fallen away because there's nothing left to say. You can't say nay. You can just, you can, you can, you know, agree or disagree on the interpretation of whether it's evil or not. But um, if it's of the fallen angels and of the pyramid, it's evil. If there's an obelisk at your capital, that means the capital is evil. The pyramid is evil. It is not a monument in the desert, Isaiah 1919. That's not it. I know. You get these churchianity people, and what do they do? They start in like that. No, the thing is 100% owned and operated uh, by the watchers, the fallen angels who keep the souls of humanity captive and trade them. Uh, and yes, they have other planets and other things and other civilizations probably that are also in their grip that we don't know about. Nothing would surprise me. The point is, I can't even get to the point of getting people to admit uh, uh, the simplest of things. How would we ever? How can you be free without the truth? And then, yeah, could you do this thing of being like a child and praying for the enemy? What I do is I pray for the prodigals. I, I pray for those people that are stuck in that system that belong to us because they have the same genetic code that they would wake up and that gene would be activated and they would come home. Because, I mean, once you're 
like me, I can't change anything. I'm just, this is the way I was born. I was born this way. I was made this way from the womb on. I've been like, I wasn't like this, you know, horrible. Well, I'm a horrible sinner now, I guess, you know, I mean, you know, but it's all, it's all in your face. It's all out in the open pretty much. <laughs> what is now in the open is nothing special, <laughs> but you know, the biggest sin I think I've been guilty of has been deluding myself, you know, and, and being in denial and, and, and being, um, you know, th those are the sort of things I've done that have been the most destructive to me and other people. But for that whole time, uh, you know, and according to my mother and other people that, you know, raised me and knew me and, you know, th that I'd always been the same. And old classmates that you run into on Facebook occasionally, I mean, we say hello and then they run, they're scared rabbits. They don't uh, they say, hey, what happened to you? You know, they're there and then they, they go. Horrified at uh, my, quote, journey, unquote. But those who really knew me would say, well, that, yeah, this journey makes sense. It's not a journey. This is just my life. But I mean, this, to them, it would be a journey. To me, it's just living. But, you know, and the ones that I meet that are brethren, they had the same kind of thing where they were, you know, their genetic code determined where they were in society or how they were. They were always kind of, we we're, I'm, no, I'm nothing special. I was the same as them. They were the same as me. We'll put it that way. We had similar circumstances in our upbringings and, and the same, the main thing you have to look at is results. We had the same kind of result every time without exception. Um, and then, you know, uh, they're the ones who were successful in the world and then they woke up and all that. Listen, I don't know about that. You know, I don't know about, um, uh, I know about working hard. You know what I mean? Working hard, getting it done, and then being shunned. I, I don't really, and being punished for it. You know, I know that. But then again, everyone that claims to be poor uh, has, has had that. Working hard and then being uh, kicked in the teeth. I think that's what all the anger is about politically. Um, and that's why unions form, because people are tired of doing work and being abused. That's another story, though. That's, see, that's where a walk with the Lord would really come in handy because then you have a place to go for redress that's not like the shop steward or the, or the union boss where you could actually get somewhere <laughs> where you wouldn't be patted on the head and say, go away, I'll see what I can do. Just like, you know, the, the boss of the room, the, the, the boss of the city. Okay, mayor, well, I'll see what I can do. But, you know, basically, if you want something done, you got to bring in a little few bucks in an envelope and slip it to him and then he'll say, okay, I'll take care of it. And someone winds up with a pair of concrete shoes and that's, that's the way things have been done from the beginning in the home of the brave and land of the free. Well, that I know everyone understands. But the, the point is, is that, you know, I pray for the prodigals, you know, those people that somehow got over there and have lived their lives over there as a lie and don't belong there. And there's many in this category and realize they got to do something about it, but they don't know what to do. And I pray for the Lord to wake them up because once that they're awakened, which means the gene is activated, uh, there's no, you know, the rate will go to the rest of the distance. Once they've been touched by the spirit just that one time, then it will go the rest of the distance because the prophecy in the Bible is that the Lord will not lose one who are his and the prodigals are his. I know it's unclear whether the prodigal gave his heart. But, of course, that's the whole point. The prodigal gives his heart in coming home. Meaning, that means on your knees before Jesus, surrendering ourselves to the master, to the one to the truth, okay? The act of coming home is a metaphor for that very thing. So of course the prodigal, I don't even know, I don't know, someone had it as a discussion yesterday and I, once again, I'm disappointed. I'm sorry that we have to have discussions like that. Um, I guess it's masturbatory uh, spirituality. 
you know, we're going to parse every word in our own understanding and, and get all these conflicts and say, no, there is no conflict. There's no conflict at all. But we're going to create conflicts and then we're going to say, you see, if you don't resolve the conflict like me, you're not really up with what's going on. And that's how people boost themselves up before the Lord. They put themselves above the Lord. They complain about Obama as they do the same thing. They say, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. And I'm not going to tell you that here. Now, we're going to go at it a different way. Anyway, um, it's a war. Obama went, before I took my digression, I'm sorry. Obama went to um, there because the, you know, there's the ritual of the sun that takes place and an eclipse or whatever it is. I, I try not to pay attention. You can watch Ancient Aliens or one of these conspiracy things on TV and you can get, you know, figure out kind of how it works. No, those series are pretty good. I mean, they've got... Uh, the only problem is they're not saying ourselves when they're talking about the pyramids and rituals and bloodletting and whatever. At least the Maya were out front with it, but we're no different than the Maya. It's the same thing. All the civilizations that come from Satan, it's the same thing. And I have to say there has been no proof of Romans 13 yet that I, just as an aside, that I would accept so far. I mean, it sounds all right, but it's, it's really, um, you know, if it came, my way of looking at it is, is, is that all legitimate governments come from God. And if they don't, then they're, um, from Satan. <laughs> Not all governments come from God. And that's my interpretation. And, and that, and that is the way that I teach it. You know, I'm not going to have people bow down to, uh, to man and bow down to Luciferic secret society on parade, which is Washington, uh, because the Bible is telling them to do that. I think the, the churches seized on that to control their populations, and they're not allowed to talk anything about politics or anything else, which means they're not allowed to talk. They have no free. You join a church, you lose your free speech, lose your freedom. Right off the bat, you lose your freedom, and then they control you. And that's basically Churchianity 101. There is no exception to that. That's the way it is, the way it's been from the beginning, and the way it will be until God smashes them. And he will, because the, 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 we are on course for hyperinflation, World War III, mass destruction, and, you know, the main thing you need to know is great misery to us all. Great misery to everybody, to where we're crying out, saying, Lord, how long? Are you going to let us suffer like this? We're on track for that sort of thing, but what you want to know is what's the roadmap like? And is there anything good ahead? And I'm here to say, yes, there are very good things ahead. People are going to be surprised that along the way, there'll be some good things. <laughs> and it will look like there's hope to hope for more time and all that. And that's happening. The... Ritual done in Hawaii and around the world, I might say, uh, to coronate the king, which finishes actually on the 20th of this month, the, the finishing of the coronation, um, failed. And the president, who is not really a president, but a king, and you know, it's a whole different thing going on there. A lot of people say he's a hybrid. I don't... I don't, you know, I don't disagree because everyone's a hybrid. I mean, you know, there's, it's, you know, it's, it's like saying you're a hybrid is really no big deal. Um, point is, is that it failed. So he returns without the sheen. And then the, the reason that they bow down, I'm going to give you the real, the real history of what's happened. The reason they bow down in the Luciferic circles is because they are all in the same club and they can't lose this coronation of the king must take place. Obama must be possessed by Lucifer. No, possessed by Lucifer, just, he wouldn't change. He'd, he'd be glowing and, you know, commander of the world and beloved and all that's what would happen. There'd be, the divisions would kind of fall away and 
his power would be consolidated. And, and, and a lot of people say it is in Washington right now after this punishing of the Republicans. But what you were seeing was not punishing, but you were seeing these Republicans playing their part in the Luciferic temple to have the good grace of the king after some public humiliation, they would be allowed in or to the next level or the next rung on the ladder of respect, and Obama would give that to them as long as they, but they had to bow down. And also the other contingency is he has to be king before the 20th. Now, just because Hawaii failed doesn't mean he may not, lightning will strike, <laughs> and he may not uh, pull that off at the coronation, but the coronation will tell us everything about whether he becomes the one or whether, and this is the thing that prophetic voices and people in this who are speaking for the Lord, who are parsing the word of God, who are bringing rhema to the world, these issues are what they should be focused on. There is nothing more... You don't need to know from me about another interpretation of the news. What you need to know from me is what's going on in that realm and what does this all mean. And, you know, to, 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 that's what you want. That's what you need. That's what, otherwise, you could just go to Breitbart or Drudge or any of these other uh, outlets that have more truthful news. And, um, or wherever, or the AP, and get your news items. So the thing that's going on now is the coronation of the king, and it's there, and everybody is deceitful, and everybody is playing a cynical game. And the Republican, you know, what's playing out in, as political theater is temple ritual, okay? And, and the movements of the temple, and this is all... The jockeying for position in the new kingdom should Lucifer show up in Barack Hussein Obama Jr. And that is basically what everyone's waiting on. And yes, the media and everybody else, they're, they're part of the ritual. Is they are worshipers, they're temple priests doing their priestly functions. Everyone who has a function in this religion that's going to fall away before our eyes and lo and behold, we will be smack dab into the, the beast out of the closet rather than the kind of hidden, veiled, cloak and dagger way it's been going on. With two systems of government, people say the shadow government. It's not the shadow government. It's the kingdom. It's the Luciferian kingdom in the rank. It's the real kingdom. Not This is the false matrix type false thing. What's really going on is Who's king? Who's queen? Who's dukes and duchesses? That's how it works. And, you know, what's the ranking and where do everybody fit into this? And that's what's not being taught to you in school. And, but you have to know it in order to get along in the new world. So that's the function of school would be to show you your place and to show you what you have to do to be successful in the world when this kind of thing is going on and the teachers in colleges today and high schools, this is their man. This is what they are mandated to do to bring up global citizens who will be able to find their way into the kingdom and know when to bow down and when not to, and to learn that kind of etiquette. And I don't know, I guess this is a lost cause. Maybe the thing is you are such a pure heart that you just can't see what's been uncovered before your very eyes and what's been going on the whole time right in your face. And you still can't see it. And like I said, because it's occluded, occult, okay? It's occultically occluded because they do have powers to keep you blind, deaf, and dumb, and that's exactly where you're going to stay. And, you know, for as much pain as it causes me to look at this, and I went through a lot of pain when I you know, traveled in the spirit to Hawaii, I could see this whole thing going on. I'm like, oh, man. And it gave me such trouble and made me so depressed, especially over Christmas. You know, I get so depressed, you know, and, and just because I have this, this thing I've had since I was a child in the spirit, and that's the talent I have that that's what you want from me, right? I'm not a talking head.
And um, if you're frustrated and need to leave right now be, with me being having low patience, go ahead and you know what, do whatever you're led to do. I don't pander. I don't need listeners. You know, I don't need. Um, we're the, I don't need to be uh, popular. I don't need to um, uh, make it presentable in a way that you can understand. Um, I'm just going to let it rip and then take it or leave it, and that's just the way it's always been, and there's no need to change it now. The rest of the world will give you that, make you feel just swell in your ignorance, and that's fine. The, what it means is this, and I just want to get on to the point rather than, I, I'm sorry, these interruptions are coming because there's obviously somebody not wanting me to continue on saying what I'm saying, especially about these rituals and the kingdom and uh, the obelisk and the thing, the, how it all ties together, at least for now. But this is the global kingdom or the new Atlantis that is fixing to come. And they're all taking their positions as kings, queens, dukes, duchesses. And a lot of these people have royal titles who are just, in, you know, leaders in society. The Hillary Clinton wound in the head. <laughs> well, there's a head wound for you. People waiting for the head wound. You know, then it'll be true. It's like, well, you people waiting for the head wound, you'll wait and you'll die waiting. Period. I'm sorry. It's just the way God works. He just, he does that, that kind of thing. You know, give you no head wound. So you'll never know where you are. Without that head wound, oh my God, we're lost. What if you had the head wound? You'd be like, this is this. This is it. So now this is going to happen. You'd be following along in the, in the text going, okay, so this is what's next. And it won't be what's next. Because God didn't work that way. Yet it will be. It won't be. It will be. It will, it will and won't at the same time. You'll never get it that way. I know, I've been to all these tribulation websites and that's, the whole discussion go, is, is isolated by scripture and, you know, legitimized or delegitimized by the order of events and, and weighed in their understanding about scripture saying, well, this can't be that time because this, this, and this hasn't happened. We're, so they're waiting. I'm waiting on you, God. Waiting for Godot, Samuel Beckett. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. Yes, we're waiting for that head wound. We're waiting for that Two witnesses, we're waiting for this, we're waiting for that. We're waiting for this seal to open. We're waiting, and we're waiting. And other people go, oh, see, it's all happened before. It's, all, it's happening right now. Those of you who are waiting, you will wait forever. You're waiting for something that's already arrived. But you're going to, no, no, I know, you don't want to acknowledge it's arrived, so you're going to keep waiting. Those of you who are not waiting, you think this is it. Um... You too will wait because the final calamity just keeps getting pushed a little further back and it's not as imminent as what you thought a few months ago and it's very painful for you, I understand. Well, then how should we live, Brother Z, if we want to be, you know, knowing what God's up to and be a good stewards of the word and, and Bible prophecy how are we supposed to go at it? Well, all the experts in Bible prophecy have misled you. Oh, not intentionally, but the end result speaks for itself. You've been misled, and I've been misled. That's why we never said Barack Hussein Obama is the Antichrist. Ladies and gentlemen, to applause, the Antichrist. We never said this is it both is and isn't. And we, we can't say, you know, is he king? I believe that's what they want, and I believe they see him as a king, yes. But also there's dukes and duchesses and, you know, princesses and different, you know, there are different levels to it. But yes, they all have their royal titles behind the scenes. And yes, they want him to be the Messiah, the one that they've been waiting for. And, you know, there are those who are already sold out to it, but they've been ordered to worship, and they do. And they actually have chambers where he is, Obama, is worshipped. As the king, the king will be the head sorcerer. 
right? In the tarot card, the Magus, you know, the sorcerer king, the magical king they've been waiting for. And so they're hoping 